Hello everyone, my name is Christina Warner and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's live stream, I'm going to be making the fifth installment in Mail Art Week. I'm going to be decorating an envelope for just sending off a love themed card, I guess you could say. I'm wearing my uh, shirt that I bought from the USPS. It's based on a postage stamp I'm gonna be using today and it's actually the inspiration for today's envelope design. For those of you who are in the chat right now and watching live, you know, as opposed to people watching this on replay, now is the time for you guys to go enter your address at the mail art uh, address submission form. Do that right now. Even if you have already this month, um, I'm going to be pulling names that come in probably within the next 15 to 20 minutes. So if you want a really good chance <laughs> for your address to be chosen, uh, please, please, please go enter. Today's envelope is inspired by this shirt. I had to have it. The only bad part about it is it's long sleeves and I'm like, I'm toasty. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's get going here. Um, I'll, I'll stay up on the top corner. Hey. Um, so this is the beginning of my envelope for today. Um, I actually did an envelope based on this postage stamp ages ago. Um, I did it live on Instagram and then I posted like a video of it at YouTube. So I'm not going to do something that's directly inspired by this uh, stamp up here, but I do still really, really love how it looks. And I've picked out the other stamps you know, based on the color of that original stamp. So here's my arrangement of stamps. Now I have enough postage on here that this could be mailed to someone internationally. So any of you international people that are in the chat, you might have an even better chance of being chosen today because I, 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 was, I was thinking I wanna do something international on this one. My plan for today, well, Okay, well, here was my original plan for my five easy mail art ideas that turned into mail art week, right? So you can see, like I actually did a lot of the things that I had planned. This last one right here was gonna be the last one. I wanted to like stamp shapes and use them as balloons. I couldn't leave it alone. I had to expand on that idea. So this is where we are headed today for this envelope. And I wanted it to look similar to that postage stamp, so that's why I'm doing it in this particular way. So just keep this in mind, this is where we're going. I'm just gonna pencil them in. I've got them really tight up here in the corner because this is an A2 envelope. I don't have a whole lot of space to work with, but I'm just gonna pencil in exactly where these stamps are so I can avoid them. Okay, we'll slide that up there. Okay, so now I know where the stamps are. I know for international mail, they prefer the return address up there. So I'm I'm just gonna put that into my design today. I'm gonna take a ruler and I'm actually going to have sort of like a little banner shape coming off the edge and I'm gonna put my address inside of it. So let's see, I'll probably have three lines of text, probably about, about like that will probably work. Okay, and then I'm planning to have like three hearts. Now I thought, what would be the best way to have hearts with also adding some clouds behind them? I think it probably, I'll get the best result with the clouds if I do a little bit of ink blending off the edge of the mask. So stay with me, stay with me here. I'm gonna start out by die cutting some heart shapes. This is the nested round hearts from Simon Says Stamp. And um, I thought this heart right here would be the perfect size. You can just see that I can have three little hearts and it'll be perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna take, let's see, where did my masking paper go? I've got a little bit of masking paper here. Oh, sorry, we're going blurry because I'm all zoomed in. Let's zoom out, honey. There we go, okay. I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of this masking paper there. All right, I kind of want them, they don't necessarily need to overlap. In fact, I don't think I'll have them overlap. And then I'll just put this other one down here a little bit lower. Okay. I'm also taking note of where the bottom points of these hearts are because the strings are gonna come down. I don't want to put this one like right there and the strings would intersect. So I'm gonna make sure I bring this over a little bit. Maybe tip the heart a little bit like that. 
All right, and now I'm going to pencil around the hearts because um, I'm not going to be ink blending over the entire heart, but I still want to use that heart shape for my balloon, so I'm going to have to draw in the balloon. So I just want to make sure I have the pencil on there so that my hearts are all uniform. They don't have to be uniform. I'm just being a little bit of a perfectionist. Okay, so now I'm working on the clouds and I'm gonna grab my masking paper and I'm just gonna trace the outline of this uh, envelope because I'm gonna cut my masking paper. Well, maybe I won't cut it exactly the size, but I'm gonna use the penciled outline to kind of figure out where my clouds are gonna be. I don't know how well this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it. Okay, my plan, I don't want any of the clouds intersecting with the name and address area. So you'll notice in my example up here, I have the clouds starting in this top corner and then they drop off really drastically down to the bottom corner. I wanna keep most of this area right here free from anything so that the address is very, very clear and legible. I wanted to have a second one kind of intersecting more of the balloons. So maybe we'll do something like that. Now, if you have a, a cloud stencil that has a similar edge or something like this, that would probably be even easier, other than you can't really like manipulate where it goes. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm gonna wait and uh, cut this one out after I've ink blended the first one. Okay, <clears throat> and then I'm going to use white pigment ink and I want this to be such a light coating of ink. Totally such a light coating. I don't want it to overwhelm because I just want it to be a hint I don't want it to completely overwhelm the entire envelope. You know what I'm saying? I want it to almost look like it's nighttime and we've just got like a little bit of a glow behind the clouds. Down right here, it's gonna be great because it's not extending up into the address area. And then we're gonna peel this up and I'm gonna cut this other edge and then put it back on. Hopefully it won't have any crazy peel ups, but we'll see. Make sure I'm leaving that part on there still. Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Just a little bit of a glowing edge. It's a little bit harder to get like a super smooth edge. So I'm gonna have to correct one little spot that's looking a little sharp right here. So now I can kind of place this a little like that and we'll have a second little cloud line. Okay, we'll peel this up. Oh, I love that. I, I love that I preserved that area for the address. A lot of times I don't and then have to figure out a way to get the address over the top and I'm like, how do I do that? I'm gonna go ahead and do my little return address up here. Got all of my acrylic graph markers, which uh, I swear I'm having like an obsession with right now. We're gonna pick out the colors and we want them to sort of match the postage stamps that I've got going here. All right, so I'm just going to draw on my little banner shape.
also got a video coming out on Monday. It's already filmed. It's ready to go. Um, all about calculating postage. A lot of you have been asking that question and I wasn't sure how to answer it because I needed to look it up myself. So I will just be sharing with you everything that I've learned and uh, giving you guys a really great tool to use as well. Alrighty, I'm using a glue stick on this last little stamp. Putting that in that little corner. this dry for a minute and then I can erase those pencil lines. So I'm going to take my white gel pen and I'm just going to add a couple little sparkly stars. I think that'll be really cute. Perhaps all the stars are overkill but I think it's kind of cute. That's dry enough up there. I'm going to use this uh, Combo Mono Zero Eraser. It's a very small eraser, so it's great for getting into tight spaces. All right, and then I've just been using this like paintbrush <laughs> to wipe off any pencil. Oh no, I got a little streak there. That's okay. I got a little streak right there too. Oh, there's not one. I was gonna try to make it look purposeful. <laughs> All right, so there is the envelope for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I do have to run. I've been on for about an hour, but thank you so much to Megan for allowing me to use her address. I think it's it fits the space perfectly. It worked out really, really well. Thank you all so much for joining me today, and I will see you guys on Monday. I My video on Monday is all about calculating postage. I have a handy dandy tool for you that's gonna make it really easy to figure that out. So I hope you'll come back and join me then. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.